today's session are Mr. Dayakar Asmuthi and Mr. Fenil Varakar. Mr. Dayakar Asmuthi is the Head of Institutional Partnership at the International Skill Development Corporation, ISDC. Mr. Daya has rich industrial experience of over 15 years across national and multinational organizations in the FMCG, banking, online space selling, and most recently the education industry. He has helped the organizations establish strong processes in business development, startup sales, channel sales, team management, and strong stakeholder connect to enhance finance capability and brand reputation. Welcome, Mr. Daya. Thank our, you, sir. Our, our second speaker for today is Mr. Finil Varakan the country head for institute of management accountants mr fenil has been in education consulting and management industry for over 16 years he has been he has been associated with various national and international institutions of high repute currently he is associated with the ima or the institute of management accountants in the capacity of country head welcome mr sunil uh, mr fenil thank sorry, you thank you very much sir mr. Fenil. Uh, let us now get started with the webinar May I request Mr. Daya to share his views on the topic for today, nurturing the global leader, education via international accreditation. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I would like to express my uh, sincere gratitude to IFM College uh, for giving us an opportunity to conduct a session on nurturing the global leader. A warm welcome to all the students, especially parents, if there are any. Uh, I am sure you guys are eagerly looking forward to start your career and getting to know the best degree course out in the city. So thanks one and all for joining in. Uh, the flow of the session is going to be basically I'm going to give an intro about what, uh, what a degree can value add uh, you guys, uh, how exactly you can uh, make sure a three years degree program can enhance your career opportunities uh, in India and abroad. Uh, and uh, the Fennel is going to be taking uh, afterwards in terms of you know giving a complete picture about what exactly a professional qualification that we are in talk uh, we are in talks with, and how exactly you can frame your career and shape up your career. All right, so uh, let me just begin uh, sharing the slide uh, to all of you. So. Um, so this is the slide that I have. Uh, so nurturing the global leader, in fact, it's nurturing the young leaders. Uh, you will be starting your graduate program. And once you finish your graduate program, you will be uh, completing more or less, I would say, about what, uh, 15 plus to 17 years of education. All right. So from LKG till graduation, you know, is about 17 years of education is what you would be completing. And the question that each one of you should ask yourselves is how exactly the three years degree program can fine tune you okay what is the maximum return on investment that you can derive with those three years of you know undergraduate program so uh, let me just give you a you know a brief picture about how exactly a university degree differs from that of a professional qualification all right so now you would have heard about somebody talking about a professional qualification so um, let me just go there so uh, professional qualifications would greatly differ from that of a university degree because they are they are more specialized in a specific area. If you look into the bullet point two, there are various professional qualifications in various domain areas. So we have professional qualifications in accountancy, supply chain, finance, analytics, and so on and so forth. For that matter, you 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 even have professional qualification in health and safety, aviation, etc. So generally, these professional qualifications are consistent globally okay we're going to uh, learn how exactly they're consistent and what is the recognition they're going to draw in the subsequent uh, slides so basically a professional uh, qualification is governed and administered by a professional body unlike a university program where uh, a degree or a postgraduate degree or a master's degree uh, is awarded by a university a professional qualification is administered and monitored by a professional body so we often hear the word called skills and you know skill gap uh, even the uh, government of India is taking a lot of steps in terms of building and enhancing the skill sets of students and individuals of various domain areas. So what we mean by skill sets is primarily is so any student, OK, a a any individual whosoever learns a particular domain area, 
he or she should possess a trait or a quality which can lead him or her to fulfill the job with utmost competency okay so it might sound like a definition but what i'm trying to say is you need to build up a specific competency levels for you to compete in the global market so we all know that india is changing the the dynamics of today's world is changing drastically and each one of you should be really geared upon how exactly you can differentiate yourself so for example to say you know if you choose a degree program you know a degree program is available you know in, in n number of universities and n number of colleges so second question that you need to ask is okay how many students would be studying and how many students would be coming coming uh, passing out a degree program and how are you going to differentiate yourself with that of another person all right so this is basically you know uh, the skill gaps is what we are talking about the professional qualification as i mentioned that they try to build or hone up a specific specific skill areas of an individual so these are more uh, pragmatic and application oriented the concepts are application oriented and they are well accepted by the industry all right now you know after achieving a university qualification generally you get a degree but here you become a member all right so that is a underlying difference between a professional body and a university qualification so in a university qualification you will get to learn a lot of subjects be it language or be it uh, you know uh, communication uh, interpersonal skills you know you know a host of other subjects all right so but in a in a in a, in a professional body your subjects are uh, confined to that particular area itself and by the end of it once you succeed once you successfully complete the qualification you will become a global member all right so what does it mean you know in university sometimes i mean many a times many universities colleges will have alumni alumni network a professional body will also have a professional network all right so what happens is even after your graduation or even after getting the professional qualification you guys are going to meet often you network often and you exchange ideas so thereby you are increasing your competency levels you are you know completely updated with the changing domains or changing trends so you keep yourself completely updated all right so uh, i would like to bring in a small uh, small uh, stay i mean uh, saying here so they say your net worth depends on your network okay let me repeat this your network okay net worth depends on your network so you will get an opportunity to you know Uh, uh, unleash your networking opportunity you can network with individuals within india outside india as well and uh, professional qualifications are present in multiple countries thereby you don't have any problems in terms of if at all you decide in your career that you want to cross indian borders and you know work elsewhere you know so you get more experience and you want to earn more money so you can certainly get an opportunity because these qualifications are you know recognized and you know valued across many countries for that matter all right and th that's how the you know university uh, qualification would differ from that of a professional qualification so uh, i have a question for you uh, in fact let me just uh, you know put a poll there uh, who would you like to choose i'm i'm sure by this time i've got a fair understanding about what we are trying to talk about so if you get a chance to do a professional qualification alongside your university degree you know what would you like to choose you know so this is what uh, you know this is what the question is and uh, you can probably answer the question for yourselves all right and uh, now the ifm advantage all right so the the course that we are talking today is about bba a uh, bachelor's in business administration uh this course comes with uh, us cma okay now what is cma cma stands for certified management accountants uh headquartered in new jersey usa the us stands for U united states and it is established in the year 1919 so guys you can get a understanding when it is established in the in the year 1919 so which means it has a longer uh, presence all right almost about a century almost about one year one 100 years of their presence and they're they're recognized in about 170 plus countries across the globe and which is where the qualification becomes a uh, uh, very handy and you know quite uh, uh, credible uh, to to add up uh, to your career prospects all right so you i have also listed of uh, the the official website of ima you can just take a look at it whenever you get time right 
So uh, the the uh, USP or the unique added advantage. So by this time, I'm I'm sure you would have figured it out. So if I have to summarize my the, a couple of slides before, what I'm trying to say is, you when the I, students in IFM College will also get an opportunity to do CMA along with BBA. So once you join BBA program, you'll also be uh, given an opportunity to pursue a professional qualification, which is CMA. So which means that, you know, the time, whatever you're investing in the college, you will get additional inputs. One is to attain a university degree. Second is to, uh, you know, uh, write the professional papers, you know, professional body exams and qualify there as well. So a student saves a considerable amount of time and cost. So in doing so. If I have to recall, if I have to, you know, kind of give you a gist, I'm sure your siblings, you, you might have seen your peers or siblings or any of your, you know, uh, cousins or other people, neighbors as well. So a typical lifestyle of a, of a student who gets into a graduate program, you know, they go to a college, all right, they park themselves in college for whatever number of time, number of hours. And then what happens once the college lets go, they try to get some other qualification outside. So they join a tutorial, they join, uh, you know, some, some academy. Academy, etc. So they try to hone up their skills. They try to get additional advantage, right? So here, what happens is, student goes to college, prepares for a semester exams, also attends some some other courses, prepares for that exam, passes that exam, plus also have to pass the semester exam. So the goal is dual oriented. Even here, the goal is dual oriented. But then what happens is, everything is thought in the same umbrella. All right. So that is where you get a maximum advantage of saving your time and cost. If a student is quite, you know, um, uh, proficient in music or sports, you can still devote your time there as well. OK, so planning is very important. All right. So that is where you need to choose a program which can actually give you a professional edge. All right. So now that's what I said, you know, BBA, once you complete your normal degree. All right. So you get you get that particular degree. It could be BA, BSc, BBA or become whatever. The question that the, the point we're talking here is about a, a business administration BBA program. So once you complete BBA, you should also be in a position to get USCMA as well. So that is a dual qualification that we're talking about. So what happens here is you get you face the employers you you are not just a graduate you're also a professional qualification holder you just you're not just a graduate with some certifications with some you know some value adds of you know maybe language maybe excel or maybe whatever small small certifications but it is that that also might matter but then you are you also have a very very credible uh, you know certificate in your hand which is the uscma qualification all right so my uh, I'm I'm done with uh, the slides. OK, I've just given you a brief idea about what a professional qualification is and how exactly a professional qualification can value add a student's career. All right. So one last point I need to add here and then pass it on to um, uh, Fennel. Um, so what happens is, you know, once you're joining a BBA program, probably you can. I don't have the statistics uh, with me. Uh, you can just ascertain uh, how many colleges in Bangalore are offering a BBA program. All right. So there could be umpteen number of colleges who would be offering a BBA program. Even if, if you imagine or assume that each college has a capacity of 60 or 100 students intake or let's say 60 students as an intake. So number of colleges multiplied by 60 students. All right. So this is the uh, I mean, that that's a quite a big majority, quite a big lot. OK, so this is the big lot of students that would be uh, you know, coming out of a graduate program after three years time. So which means that in all these guys, you know, there are only two options. One, they want to probably continue their studies to further probably MBA is what they would probably like to do. And then some of them would also like to seek a job opportunity. So what if you want to seek a job opportunity? How are you going to stand in the job market? What is the kind of remuneration or the salaries that you can expect from the employers? What number of multinational companies are willing to take you uh, for the uh, for the candidature? All right. So these are the questions that you need to be asking yourselves. So you from an academic stream, you are getting into a semester scheme and it's just a three years and it just gets over just like this. But then it's up to you how you're going to make this three years, uh, you know, glorified and in terms of, you know, getting the uh, complete benefit for your time and money that you invested all right having said this you know what we will do is you whenever you have the question you can post it in the chat box 
uh, we 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 have you know designed in such a way that we are going to cover all the uh, essential elements of this particular program uh, however if you have any questions you can put, put it across in the chat box and we will take each and every question after we complete the presentation so thank you very much for listening i'll get back to you shortly uh, final over to you thank you uh, thank you mr daya for your valuable insight and uh, it was really wonderful hearing from you thank you so much uh, final you need to unmute yourself please can you hear me final can you yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we can hear. Okay, thank you, thank you very much, uh, uh, IFIM, for organizing such an event. Uh, I'm sure this is going to help students to understand the current programs which is offering by IFIM. I'm happy to be part of this call to give some insights about one of the wonderful qualification uh, which is available around the world, and especially what's the demand and what kind of uh, skill set you actually carry while uh, doing this particular program. So to, just to give you an overall picture, as uh, Daya mentioned, we are an organization 100 years old, and we spread across 150 countries with 1,25,000 members around the globe. And uh, apart from uh, what we call as members or the professional body or office, we do have 300 chapters around the world. So the purpose, so usually what I, I, I used to talk to the students in this way, See, for example, just imagine you completed your BBA or BCom or MBA program uh, in Bangalore and you're moving uh, maybe one, one other side of India. And when you go for a job, so what the first question comes up, what is your basic qualification? So you might say it is BBA or BCom or MBA. So maybe the next question which you might face from an interviewer, it is like from where this college or the university stands. On the other side, just imagine uh, you are a chartered accountant uh, or you completed your CA program in one of the villages of India and you go for an interview and talk to them, say, I'm a chartered accountant. Do you think uh, actually people will come back and ask you from where you have done the qualification? No, am I right? So that's one biggest difference of a professional qualification the same way, if you look at CMA, you go around the world and people know what a CMA stands for and what kind of skill set they're actually able to bring to the table. So we work with a lot of organizations globally. Uh, you can see some of them are mentioned here. So when we say they are our corporate supporters, so what we do with these corporates? First of all, we create more and more awareness about the CMA certification, which is Certified Management Accounting Certification, to people, the designations. We might need to work with HR. We might need to work with finance department. We might need to work with any specific department. So we go and talk and create awareness. That is one. The other side, some of these corporates work with us in the research initiatives. So we come up with some of the global research initiatives. We also work with these organizations in enhancing the skill set of their employees. So uh, probably uh, I would say we are all part of the great India uh, because if you really look at uh, outside India, like people actually look at professional qualification after a few years of their career. But in fact, if you look at in India, our students maybe pro probably they might start even from Eight standard, that's the kind of scenario which is happening. Or in other sense, at least we start preparing for professional qualifications from 11th standard or from at least from the graduation levels. So here, what we work, we work with corporates to enhance the current employees and enhance their skills in the field of CMA. So I'll talk to you about what is CMA and what is management accounting. So that is some of the way how we work with corporates. We work with uh, many universities and colleges. You can see some of our prominent colleges and universities in India. And you can see also IFIM College as part of it. 
and we work with around 40 plus universities and colleges these colleges offer cma program as part of their curriculum or as an additional program uh, which which ideally why these professional qualifications are in, imbibed or integrated or given as an add-on program because the colleges universities and the organizations around the world they actually understand the value of the qualification and what what how how it helps them so we all talk about um, you know the skill gap you know we say according to nascom what they say only 10 percentage of people who completed their graduation are employable or many other reports come back in the same format even less than 10 percentage of graduates who are completing are really employable whereas what we do as an organization a professional body we bridge the gap between what industry looking forward and what a university offer to you so the program which is ima stands for which is institute of management accountants we provide the leading qualification the sought after qualification called certified management accountants program so now people usually compare you know what do, what do you mean by management accountants program uh, i'm i'm joining for a mba or bba program which is more, more business in nature so why should i look at a manager accountants accountants program is something related to uh, maybe bcom or some other program so the biggest difference between uh, a financial accountant and management accountant so what you said is right because accountants in india people conceive accountants are the people who are doing bookkeeping they just do the entry that is the work of an accountant yes in a way if i say a financial accountant a financial accountant prepares the books of accounts they prepare the balance sheet and p and l account and showcase to the company and other stakeholders stating that this is what the current position of my organization whereas a role of a management accountant starts looking at the financial and balance sheet and helping organization in taking the right decision so if in a way if i look at an accountant or a financial accountant uh, or in indian terms we call it chartered uh, public accountant if they focus more on valuating the organization whereas a management accountant role starts where a financial accountant finishes job they convert they look at the financial information they convert that information for the business value creation so i i would like to say management accountants are finance and accounting professionals who create value for the organization and work very closely with the management in strategic business decision making so the main key areas where a management accountant work it is into the organization planning ma managing the risk within the organization cost control cost management pricing internal control performance measure decision analysis so if organization is taking a decision so they look at analyze the decision and say okay what are the risk areas in that what are the other options which we can look at whether you want to go for a merger or acquisition or whether should we produce the products for our own or we should outsource it so all these decisions are analyzed by a management accountant and the other areas again they work very closely with business managers or ma management in taking the right decisions now the interesting fact about a management accountant a management accountant's job or the manager management accountant skills are transferable skills which means yes i am i'm part of the business but i am not into accounting i might be not even into finance but i will be leading the organization or i might be working in operations and looking at how to improve the process so management accountant's role is fit in any service and any sector where actually you look at decision making skills are required that is one of the reasons behind maybe like i look at we do have students who completed 
you know other accounting programs chartered programs those who are done their mba programs even sometimes we get engineers and doctors even engineers and doctors come and do cma because that help them to look at the organization and business in a broader way definitely a person who's managing should have the knowledge in finance you don't need to look at the accounting auditing you have chartered accountants to look at all respect to all the qualification because that's a job again you need to get into deep but management accountants is all about okay looking at the data how can i help organization in taking the right decision now the roles uh, if you look at we do have members who completed cma qualification around the world 34 percentage of people who completed this qualification work as cfos executives and controllers 22 percentage of them work as directors and managers 33 percentage of them which is ideally the students who are completing their graduation along with their cma program or starting their early careers in the next you know 3 to 4 years time in the first early stage of their career with cma qualification they work as management accountants and financial analysts business analysts they work in fna fpna costing pricing internal controls they work again in uh, investment decision making kind of job roles and 11 percentage of them work as practitioners in india we call it as consultant so a management accountant work with multiple uh, organization and helping organization in taking the right decision so some of the roles uh, i hope everyone is watching the screen uh, um, we already discussed so just quick update people work as our members or our qualified people work as ceos cfos financial controllers vice presidents directors managers cost accountants treasury they work in business analyst data scientist and data analytics they work in risk financial advisory and it's not limited as i told you it, it's open up boundaries for people who are interested in their career especially in the field of management and decision making now uh, we when we talk about uh, the qualification i was initially talking about the skill gap between what industry looking at and what our academic candidates usually carry so there is a different way how ima do that every 5 to 6 years ima go around the globe and talk to our employees our corporate connects and our senior leadership people in the organization and ask them what kind of skill set you are expecting from a person who is joining your organization who want to lead your organization so what kind of skill set you are expecting so we change or update our skills looking at the industry requirements so whereas that is what we call as ima management accounting competency framework so the entire qualification is developed on the topics which is strategy planning performance reporting and control business acumen and operations technology and analytics i saw somebody is asking in the chat like whether i can do analytics as well in fact i'm happy to share the syllabus which is started from 2020 which is the last academic year the students were preparing from that time onwards the technology and analytics is part of cma qualification i'm not saying that we are going to in depth of our python or any of the tools but in this qualification which help you to look at how how a management accountant need to use business analytics how to derive so if business analytics help you to come out with a specific result how to help and how can a management accountant work and better their performance so that's also part of it then professional ethics and values definitely it's part of any professional body these days and especially ima as an organization on very high on that and again the next part which is core so i used to say once you complete your cma you are a branded product anyone say okay you are a cma so i know that you have you carry certain skills now 
you need to acquire a lot of other skills like communication presentation you know interview skills how to talk to people how to send a basic email sometimes i face this kind of challenges so these topics are covered under leadership and we do have an concept called ima leadership academy in this leadership academy we provide a lot of these kind of topics as webinars and all ima members so, so you later on you take up an ima membership all ima members are eligible and free to get these support and services so it even cover from you know robots uh, like you know talking about uh, how you effectively prepare even if you know you are assuming even you, they talk about how to look at time management there are a lot of variety of topics which is required for the leadership is part of that again uh, you learn in this qualification the interesting fact about it when you compare with any other indian or uk qualification all well good i appreciate all these qualifications and everyone approach the qualification in a different way and this is more a uk sorry us focused or started from a us body and that's where you can see the approach itself is different it is not about lot of examination it's all about critically evaluating you in the examination so if you look at cma as a qualification you might be learning uh, 6 plus 6 core practice areas of management accounting but ideally you writing just two exams from ima perspective once you clear both two part examination you can there is no other final like there is no other examination so the subjects what we cover in this which is external financial reporting decisions planning budgeting and forecasting performance management cost management internal control technology and analytics we already discussed about it financial statement analysis i discussed the management accountant job is looking at the financial statements and help organization in taking so they analyze the statement and help organization corporate finance which is again uh, you know what we look at the top levels of finance that is what you know people look at in the senior levels risk management investment decisions and professional ethics so these two part examination each part examination consists of 100 multiple choice questions and two essay question which will you will get 30 minutes each and there is no negative marking the examination is for 4 hours and these examination happens in the prometric centers across across the world in india we do have eight exam centers we do have one in bangalore so there is no need of traveling or anywhere anywhere around so that's a good thing about for you all of so now uh, when we look at these topics uh, you might cover uh, some part of this topic or almost all part of these topics as part of your bba or bcom curriculum but the biggest difference is uh, we in ima we call as you know cma qualification there are three levels we call as level a level b and level c so level a is knowledge and comprehension level b is application and analysis level c is evaluation and in synthesis so you might learn all these topic as part of your undergraduate or postgraduate program more from a knowledge and comprehension level whereas ima will test you from application analysis synthesis and evaluation in a way if i look at we need to change our learning pattern so it's not about by hearting so for example if i ask you how to light a bulb you might have different answers but whether you know the basic concept behind it so that is the way you have to learn yourself so it is all about concept learning application and so for example i'm learning something why i'm learning where i'm going to apply and if i apply that in that particular situation what will be my results so this is the way how you have to learn and those who are really interested in business area i'm found i'm sure that you will find this qualification more interesting than a normal accounting program uh finally to get your final certified you need to complete both part examination you should complete your graduation 
staff. You should have two years of relevant experience and an active membership. But provided you can start preparing for the qualification while you are doing your undergraduate program, and you can also go and write your examination. So nothing stopping you from that. So once you complete three years, you have another uh, four more years to get experience and apply for the final certificate called you are, where you, you are allowed to use officially CMA along with your name. So I, I think almost discussed we do have hundreds of testing centers across the world and exams happens in six months in a year, Jan, Feb, May, June, September, October. This will help you to fix your exam date. You can fix your exam date. It is not like how the university exams happen. You fix a day, everyone come and write the exam. Here you fix your date in advance. You prepare for that, go and write according to your available time. And which happens from Monday to Friday. So that's the basic thing which I would like to say about uh, IMA and CMA. So as I told you once again, uh, IMA is a professional body who offers the qualification called CMA, which is Certified Management Accountants Program. So the key intake, why people, it is globally recognized, which will give you a career advance, advancement. For example, we do get people from people who are working in auditing and tax and come and do the CMA to move to the pure finance. And people come and do it for look at CMA. For example, I'm allowed to quote his name. So the vice president of HPE. So he, he was working in the senior levels, but he took CMA to move to the higher levels. So now he's he's looking at uh, global uh, you know finance specifically from the global perspective. So these are the kind of job profiles uh, which you can look forward in your uh, career life. So I'm not saying like you know once you complete the next day you will be a director, manager, or you know the CFO or controller, but it help you or shorten your time to reach to the senior leadership levels. Uh, and according to our salary survey, they say the students who completed CMA earn 55 percentage more than the non uh, CMAs. And if it's we look at from an age group of 20 to 29, that they say 70 percentage than the total compensation of the other people. So it's a pretty well globally accepted qualification. And uh, we as an IMA, as an organization, we are always here to help you. Just want to give you one more insight, just me close before closing down. We all talk about analytics, robotics, technology. It's going to take away the jobs. In reality, yes. Any jobs which can be repeated in nature, which can be automated in nature, going to get automated. So what kind of skill set which you are ideally required as more into analytics, leadership, how to look at and help organization in taking the right decisions. So that's what CMA all stands for. I, I wish the students who are participating able to go to the IMA website and you can do a research yourself and understand more about it. And I'm sure those who are interested in the field of finance and management will look at this as a wonderful qualification in their career journey. So thank you. Thank you very much uh, for ISDC and IFM. Thank College. you. Thank you very much, Mr. Shanil, for uh, sharing those wonderful experiences from your journey and giving a very deep insight on how CMA works and every component of that. And it was a pleasure listening to you. And uh, in fact, you've answered a couple of questions that uh, participants have already posted uh, during the course of your uh, presentation. So apart from that, there are a few other questions uh, that are there. I would I would uh, bring it up now uh, and uh, I guess we can uh, open the house for questions, I believe. So since both the presentations are done with now. Yeah, I I, I can uh, spot a question uh, posted by Lokesh. Uh, he's asking uh, students are allowed to do finance and business analytics program at the same time. The answer is very much yes. Uh, you can certainly do finance. You can certainly do analytics. Whatever uh, is going to be fit for you, you can certainly pursue those qualifications as well. However, as um, you know, Fenel has mentioned uh, while showing the qualification framework, IMA also has uh, the element of analytics, uh, not in depth though, but you know, uh, technology and anal analytics is a part of a part one of CMA. 
all right so you can just um, you know get a hang of that as well okay uh, followed by uh, uh, mustafa is also asking a similar question on the same lines uh, can i know uh, how much do you relate analysis with management accounting uh, well i uh, see the, the answer to this is uh, is very simple um, uh, the the entire qualification is on a very pragmatic uh, grounds uh, it's a concept oriented uh, you get to know a lot of case slides and case studies uh, typically when a student is getting uh, used to a case study methodology the student learns a lot of analysis you know by default you know understanding uh, the case understanding a problem looking for a solution to it you know there there it goes a lot of analysis internally so they, they, the the answer lies there you know you can certainly you will certainly will get into a analysis uh, analytical bent of mind for sure uh, analytics as a, as a subject okay so that also is dealt uh, uh, briefly in the entire qualification i hope i i answered that question and i could see um uh, harshvardhan is asking uh, um cma available with bcom no it is not available and with bcom it is the acca qualification you can do um uh, uh, there is one more question from yesh uh, is ifim provides uh, super specializations in bba uh, Venkatesh sir, I think you can answer this question. Uh, there's this question called Yes. I'll repeat that. Yeah. He's asking, is IFM provides super specialization in BBA? Yeah, of course. There are specializations in BBA. Once you are in the final year, yes, you do uh, have a chance to take your own specialization. You have specialization in finance, and uh, you have in marketing as well. And uh, any other uh, queries uh, exclusively uh, given by IFIM. You can uh, definitely write to the contact that I will be sharing with you at the end of the session. I think I have already given that uh, earlier as well. I'll be giving it uh, at the end of the session, and uh, they may definitely uh, write write to them. And the concern will uh, definitely get back uh, with the answer for all the queries they have written. So. Okay, fine, sir. So, Fennel, there's a question for you. Uh, the question is uh, posted by Vasu Datta. Okay, his question is, what is the difference between CMA India and CMA US? Yes, thank you. Uh, see, I would like to say uh, both are accounting qualifications, whereas CMA India, which is more focused on cost, they were known as Institute of Cost, cost Accountants or Cost Accountants of India. The major difference from uh, looking at uh, CMA is more a global in nature. So if you look at really uh, from an acceptance perspective, CMA get uh, in the US CMA. So if you want to call it as CMA, US CMA get a global acceptance. Whereas Indian CMA is more focused on Indian scenarios as well. They look at tax rules, regulations of India. Whereas US CMA is a global in nature. So this is, as I told you, here the management we, we think as a cma is here is we focus more on management accounting i do respect to all qualification as i told you every qualification created with an intention to help candidates or people so all respect to them but on the same time cma as i told you it's a global in nature there is uh, there is a question from abhinav satyanarayan and asking keeping in mind how the pandemic has affected the global economy will cma be a safe qualification for you so what would be your i, I think i i would like to say uh, recently one of my member was i was just uh, discussing he's in a very senior level so i was talking to him because globally uh, the recession globally uh, you know people are losing their jobs so all these scenarios happening so i was talking to him, he said you know the good thing about management accountant when you want to start the organization you need a management accountant even you might be the last person, even if you close down the organization, you will be the last one to go out. So in a way, yes, management accountants is a role which is highly in demand. And I'll tell you, um, maybe if you look at few years back, so I look at from IMA, I joined with IMA around two years back, but I'm associated with the professional bodies last uh, 10 to 12 years. So I have seen a gradual shift happening in the industry which is more moving towards management accounting. I'll just give you a small example for that. Recently, uh, one of our uh, corporate uh, partner or corporate supporter, HPE, they recruited around uh, 55 interns, whereas 40 plus are CMAs 
and the rest is from other particular qualifications. So what happens, what they say, the, the role of a management accountant is increasing in the organization. So if you look at whether you need an accountant, it's a question mark because it's it, these jobs can be automated. We, you have softwares just to enter your data and it will help you to finally prepare your balance sheet and p and account. But you need to people who evaluate help organization and decision making. And that is where if you look at in the initial period of the global economy and the way how outsourcing happened, the first kind of jobs we got as, you know, telecallers, then we start moving to BPOs, then to KPOs. Now it's changing more into the consulting. So what happens? The people who can help organization in decision making, that is the work a consultant do. So that kind of jobs are, that, that is what CMA is going to help you. So I very much, I uh, agree to the fact, you know, this pandemic, even, uh, you know, and in fact, we are getting more people and more students in this pandemic. So that itself showcase people are more interested to look at CMA. So thank you. I hope uh, I able to answer that question. So yeah. Ruchali, Ruchali Vaidya has a question. Does a student need to have more amount of interest in accountancy subjects while okay. choosing a CMA? Uh, well, uh, the answer is uh, yes. And the answer is no as well, because we also get no is because we also get a lot of students, uh, you know, from science background. So as you all know, students from a science background do not get do not, you know, have the, uh, you know, uh, choice to study finances or accountancy subjects during plus two. So even then, the student has fled and they've done very well in CMA. So it's it's the attitude and it's the interest levels that you're going to put, the time of uh, amount of time that you're going to invest in college. And if you have taken a profession qualification, yes, you also need to invest an equal amount of time uh, in, in, in you know studying uh, the subjects. Uh, there's one more question from Neha. Uh, what are the topics I get to learn? I guess Neha, we've we've shown you the slide uh, from from Fennel. Uh, he's talking about uh, the two parts. You know, what are the different topics that you're going to study? Uh, you can also browse imanet.org to get more into that. And uh, Shush Shushmita is asking: Should one be smart in math to take? Um, take up CMA. Uh, well, Shushmita, uh, you you need to be um, good in arithmetics. You know, CMA does not uh, enable you to learn calculus or any any kind of uh, you know uh, 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 technical uh, you know aspects in mathematics. So, just a, a fundamental knowledge of uh, arithmetics would do that. I'm sure. Uh, I mean, I would say just a high school or elementary max would be sufficient uh, for anyone to pursue a CMA qualification. I think um, I can see another question like number so that uh, saying ACC and CMA. So I, 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 if I'm allowed to answer that, so ACC is an accounting qualification which is more focused on tax, assurance, finance, and audit side, whereas CMA has a qualification more focused on finance and management accounting. Both are international qualification. One is uh, started from UK again a global qualification. And CMA as a qualification started from US again it's a global qualification. It's all about your interest because I, I used to say you can't compare an apple with orange. So uh, both are good. It, it's it, it, it's got its own taste. It's all depends on what is your interest level is all about. So if so you yeah. 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 So, so yeah, got it. Yeah. Uh, Tanuja Sharma is asking a question: uh, Will IFM provide classes for CMA? Uh, yes, uh, uh, Tanuj. Tanuj Sharma, sorry. Uh, Tanuj, yes, uh, there is going to be classes for CMA. That is a whole, um, uh, you know, thing that we are talking about. The PBA qualification uh, in IFM comes with CMA. A student will have the option to choose CMA alongside the PBA. And uh, will will CMA be safe qualification to pursue in future? Um, uh, Ashani Dev Chakravarti is asking this question. Uh, will CMA be safe qualification to pursue in future? Uh, see, let me uh, answer this question a little more uh, philosophically. Uh, see, uh, there's nothing like a safety net, all right? So because things are dynamic, 
like you know nobody would really envisage uh, you know 40 50 days ago what is going to be the situation for the indian economy and nobody would have ever dreamt that we all are will be locked down and you know spending time within four walls right so um, but yes what really uh, one should really focus is uh, to to pursue a qualification which is professional number one which has a wide acceptance and which has a credibility all right so you need to answer these questions you know if at all a student goes to any kind of a degree program the student can also do a lot of courses you know alongside the degree the student can join any kind of a small training institute near to the residence and start doing digital uh, digital marketing or um, you know business analytics big data there are like you know uh, the list is endless but then what questions is when you invest your time when you invest your money so when you get a certification will the certification be recognized from the companies will it will it has a relevance maybe after 10 years down the line whatever you you have studied will it has a relevance is what something you need to ask so cma is one such qualification even let's say after a decade or two of your of your experience you know you can still get up get up uh, you know elite tag you know you can suffix cma after your name you will be recognized in india outside the india and you can grow up to the controller level you can grow up to the up to the cfo level you can just imagine the kind of business that you can handle and i just posted a poll uh, how many of you would would uh, you know uh, look for uh, look for um, uh, you know uh, the the job mba and business uh, you know some of you responded that you would really want to uh, get into the business you want to get into mba all of that but then some of you also mentioned that you want to get into business but see now business is all about money right so you need to learn how to manage money and manage risk so this is one professional qualification which is going to teach you all of that okay so i hope i uh, any any other questions that has come in newly Uh, I'm just going from the beginning. So uh, actually, um, two years. Actually, I'm I'm in second year. So is it fine to do CMA? Uh, Tanuja, um, uh, your question is not so clear. Second year, what I mean, uh, second year. I mean, I presume that you're in a second year degree for that matter. Yes, you can certainly do CMA. But what we try to do is any student who is joining uh, IF, IFM College uh, BBA um, uh, combination, uh, we're going to teach the CMA components right from the starting stage itself. The the structure is like this. Uh, we're going to teach CMA right from the semester one. Of course, there's not going to be too much of load or too many subjects will be taught during the semester one. Uh, gradually, we are going to teach you more of CMA concepts, and then a student can can. can give uh, one exam in semester 4 the other exam the student can take it up in semester 5 all right so which means student before completing uh, a bba qualification student can also have a, a cma qualification so that is a whole uh, a rationale behind uh, learning cma along with alongside your graduation what kind of job uh, we can expect doing bba cma I think uh, this is something that we already covered, uh, but I'll just uh, look at this. So, I actually have management account also a certified management account. We we do have this program running uh, last three to four years in certain other universities and colleges. So, if I look at uh, uh, from which prof profiles which these candidates, fresh graduates, are getting in, they're getting into financial analyst, they're getting into costing, P and uh. uh FPNA, which is finance planning and uh, you know accounting domains, they work in the pricing, internal control. So these are the major and uh, investment uh, decisions. So like for example, Northern Trust. So Northern Trust hires CMAs for their investment decisions, kind of the one. So yes, uh, these are the kind of jobs which you can ideally look at after completing the qualification. I hope I answered. thank you yes uh, final i think you did uh, you definitely have answered uh, every question to the satisfaction so um, is there uh, any other questions that uh, we are uh, still have to answer i guess i guess we have covered almost uh, all the questions that were posted is there anything you uh, mr daya and mr final uh, want to take up or uh, cover before our wrap up no i'm absolutely fine i would only request uh, candidates to just wo watch imanet.org just go and log in and see 
what is this all about so you will get in the, you know additional information about it Fee structure, I think it will be taking up later, am I right? Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's something and, I think. Uh, I can see about the materials. I think the materials are official materials, which is uh, our official materials are published by Wiley. So uh, the university through ISDC will be providing our official prep material, which is published by Wiley in India. I mean, uh, they are a global publisher, but they are office in India. Yeah. I think there is no further questions. I think, uh, uh, yeah, I think we are done with uh, with uh, almost uh, everything. So, um, is there anything, uh, Mr. Daya, you want to uh, give or share? Mr. Daya, are you there? Mr. Daya? That thing looks like, yeah, he's yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, are you there? No, is there anything from here and you want to uh, share? Not able to hear you. Me? Yeah. No, no, no there, I'm not. There. There. There you go. Your voice is not audible. No, I think there is some issue there. Yeah, we can't hear you. Maybe you can is... type it. Some technological issues. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So there is a question uh, for doing CMA, whether they have to choose BBA general or BBA specialization. BBA specialization. BBA specialization. And also there was a question whether uh, CMA comes with BCom also. I mean, you can learn CMA, no doubt, but the model which is offered in uh, IFIM is in a different platform. A different platform. Yeah. I mean, th th there is no restriction. So that's what I was mentioning. We do have engineers, doctors, uh, even doing CMA program. Uh, okay. so it, it's not stopping. So it, in reality, I'll tell you uh, what we found it, the people who are coming even from engineering background, they do CMA much faster than, unfortunately, commerce and management graduates. Uh, see, the reason is uh, CMA is not about uh, just number crunching. It is all about analyzing the real business situation. And, you know, so analysis is a concept. So the, if you look at that, that is more known in, uh, you know, engineers. It's not stopped in engineers. It's anyone got that interest. So I have seen Sometimes the students who scored 95 percentage fail in CMA exams in the first attempt, whereas sometimes students who scored even 60 percentage clear in the first attempt. So it is not based on how much you scored in your 12 standard or your previous education. It's all about, you know, how differently you are learning, whether your learning system is concept learning or by hearting. I used to say if you are doing by hearting, it will not make any sense. Can uh, I do MBA with CMA? MBA with CMA. I mean, you can do CMA anytime. Uh, it's not with anything. But I used to say, if you are completing your CMA program along with your graduation, it is better you start working. And later on, it depends on your interest and focus area. You can choose the right program. Uh, looks like looks like there is some audio issues at the uh, there. Yeah. yeah. So uh, so what? So. Um, so uh, Mr. Phil, is there uh, anything else? Uh, that, that no, is, thank that, you, sir. It was great session. Think, yeah. So I would yeah, like to again thank uh, you know IFIM for organizing uh, such a great session. So it uh, it was wonderful having uh, you and Mr. Daya uh, as panelists uh, in this uh, wonderful webinar today, and I'm sure students would have had an uh, uh, you know uh, deep insight on the subject and. Uh, 
uh, you have taken your time out and you have explained and uh, told them everything uh, in detail to their satisfaction. And uh, it was wonderful having you both. And definitely look forward to have you on board uh, in the days to come as well. And uh, um, great. Uh, thank you, everyone. We appreciate you being here. Hope you have had a very enlightening session from the experts. And uh, thanks again for joining us today. Have a pleasant and a safe weekend. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. I think I have to end the call. I think I'll end the call.